Well, we have made our way to a little town called Hebron, Indiana, in the northwest corner of the state of Indiana, to Precision Turbo and Engine, Harry Huska's world-famous turbocharging headquarters. And to my left is a guy you knew known for a long time. Most of you know him as, well, Race Pack Roger or Roger Race Pack. Normally, Roger Race Pack. Along the time, as long as you've heard of PA, you've always heard Roger Race Pack. And Roger, you're now a part of this company, man. Welcome to the deal. That's cool. Thanks. Yeah, I'm the VP of Global Operations here. So Harry brought me on board to, to help the company in its quest to grow larger and, and go into new and different organ, uh, fields to, you know, turbochargers and EFI and and uh, waste gates and all the good stuff we do here. Well, you've had to make quite the transition, though, to go from the warm to the cold, though. How's that working out for you? Yeah, going from 80-degree days to uh, I think it's like 12 out there today has been something else. Yeah. But, uh, you know, other people live here, and they survive, so I figured I can hack it. That's pretty cool. Listen, man, I was very surprised and very tickled. And for Harry, I will also say that uh, they obviously got a good man. You've been in this sport a long, long time, and you're very well respected in it. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm very excited about the future, and there's a lot of good things coming. That's cool as all get out. Well, we're going to get with Joe. Joe, thank you, by the way, for having us. Thanks for what you folks do for us. Uh, I'm going to have PDRA. And, uh, gosh, this facility is just unbelievable. Tell, first of all, tell me about this building. I mean, it looks brand new. This is uh, the third building that we've got on our property. This building was built about three years ago now, and it houses our, our part of our turbo manufacturing, our sales groups, our executive management group. But it's a great new facility, and uh, we're very proud that we have it here. And I simply must tell you, Jimmy, it's like a bank in here. This thing is so modern and so you can just tell by looking. And I know, Joe, you mentioned uh, how many years old it is, but tell me one more time. This facility that you're standing in right now is approximately three years old. So it's a brand new facility here. There's two other buildings on the property, but this is the main building right here. Today, we're going to go through precision turbo and engine. So stick with us. We're headed to the back. So what would appear to me to be a shipping and receiving area uh, does serve uh, multiple purposes. Joe, tell me what's happened here first of all. You're absolutely correct, Brian. So what's going to happen is here you're going to have all the inbound freight that comes in through the loading dock area. It's going to get put in this area here, and this is going to be our receiving area. Right. So what you're going to find here is the raw castings that come into our facility, as well as the component level parts that we do not manufacture in-house. They're going to be brought in here. Not only does it serve as the receiving and loading dock, but it's also going to reserve as an area for, for storage to get these products staged and get ready to go through into our quality lab as well as into our machine department. So if you were to take it, if you don't mind me just kind of taking a look at it, one of these castings, this casting will all only make its way through a QC check? Absolutely. Is that right? What's going to happen is every component, whether it's a raw casting, whether it's a raw casting or an individual component, they're going to be staged here and then ultimately they're all going to find its way through our quality lab. Each and individual component gets checked for quality assurance. And uh, without going inside, I'm sure you have the latest, greatest equipment for that as well. We'll just kind of peek in the door. To, uh, tell me what's going on in here right now. So what we got going on in here right now is we're looking at each individual component as they come in. Uh, we've got a number of things going on in here, but right now it looks like they could be looking at either, looks like turbine wheels today is what they're going through. So they're going through and making sure each one conforms to the print. It passes the hardness test and that it's ready to go into a production unit. Very cool. That is really, really neat. And you can tell everybody, I mean, there's, there's micrometers, dial, dial calipers, the all, all the automatic. The Nexus is one of the best measuring devices known to man, right? I mean, we've seen it at a couple of different shops. Absolutely, Brian. That's about as good of a machine as you can get right there. And as you stated earlier in the tour, you know, Harry, when he does something, he's going to do it right. So he's only going to get the best components for our products as well as the best equipment to test those components. Very, very cool. Well, Jimmy, zooming in on that and looking in on that inspection lab. Let's take our way and, uh, if you don't mind, and uh, head over toward uh, kind of the starting point, if you will. Give me an idea where these things uh, get started once they've made their way past the testing department or the QC area and uh, get ready for whatever the next uh, part of the deal is. No problem, Brian. So what we have here is once the products make their way through the, the quality lab, they're going to find themselves out here. Now this could be anything from raw castings that are being ready to be staged to get into the machine shop, or it could be products that are have already been qualified, they've gone through the machine shop, and they're ready here to get into the cage. Right. So what's going to happen now is we're going to walk our way into the staging area, and then we're going to find our way into the machine shop. So would you call this 
more of a JIT program that you guys have here? Is everything a per order basis, or do you guys physically try to stock a lot of stuff and keep it there warehouse wise? Typically, we try to have at least 90 days inventory on hand okay. in raw material, but we always have components on the shelf. And for our high running products, we do have those things on the shelf and ready to go. So when a customer calls in, we try to process this order within 24 to 48 hours. Oh, very cool. Jimmy, come on, let's go in here. This is getting cool. I'm digging it. If you don't mind looking at our backs, come on and hang with us. I hear machinery going, and as everybody knows, I dig a lot of that. Obviously, some aluminum products that have already been machined. And again, part of the staging area, those that have already gone through a machine process, they appears. I'm just guessing. Wow. Tell me what is happening all in here. Obviously, Haas Automation, one of your favorites. Absolutely. Haas is a great machine, and we, we utilize quite a few of them in our fleet of machines. Give you an idea here. This is a, a bearing housing that's used on our Gen 2 ProMod turbochargers. This is a bearing housing that's very commonly found in the Pro Boost class really? at PDRA. And so you, you got to kind of train me a little bit because I'm not that good at it. 80-some millimeters, is that what I'm thinking, or no? In the Pro Boost class, we actually get to run 94-millimeter turbochargers. So to give you an idea... In a twin configuration on most of those cars that are running out there, you're going to see an excess of 37, 3,800 horsepower on those cars. Wow. It's just amazing. Like I told you before, folks, when we were at the front of this building, you're literally seeing things that eyes have never seen before. And I say a special thanks to you, Joe, and to Harry as well. Let's work our way around and uh, kind of tune us up on what's happening over this area over here. No problem. So as we make our way into the machine shop here, you're going to find that we're going through the component balancing process. Each individual component, whether it's a compressor wheel or a turbine wheel, once it's made its way through the quality lab, it's going to find its way over to the component balancing. All of those individual components are balanced to our specifications, and then at that point, and only at that point, will they release back to the cage to be put into production units. Wow. How cool is that? i got to look at some of this stuff. I'm amazed by this type of thing. I'm a I'm a mechanical kind of a guy, so it it's amazing to me. I am very much, my son's a turbo freak and knows all about them, and I really don't. I'm embarrassed to admit that. However, I'm going to learn some stuff today. What do you actually physically call this part, if you don't mind me asking? So this part of the turbocharger is referred to as the turbine wheel. Okay. So in a class-limited venue, this is a very important product to the, to the component of the turbocharger. And these right here, these are a number of different sizes, but what you're typically looking at here is anywhere from a 66 millimeter turbine wheel all the way up to a 75 millimeter turbine wheel. So these are very common in more of our streetcar applications okay. or a twin turbo, 427 inch all the way up to 454 inch twin turbo application. Wow. That is really cool. We'll continue on and head back. And boy, you would have no shortage of high tech equipment and machinery in this building, do you? Now, I'm only guessing as we're going through here that this may have been part of the original or one of the original structures or no? Actually, the, the original structure that Precision Turbo and Engine was in, it's ended right here. Yeah. Right around 2004 to 2005, this addition was built onto the shop, and this now houses the majority of our machine shop back here. Very cool. Come on, Jimmy. I'm into this big time now. We're getting into all kinds of high-tech, but but not the biggest of the Haas equipment because it's not necessary because you don't really build, build great big parts like blocks or whatever. That's absolutely correct. You know, the majority of turbochargers that we offer are going to be for your anywhere from your 1,000cc engines all the way up to your 600-inch big block application. So the, right. the size of turbochargers that we offer are anywhere from 100 horsepower upwards of 25, 2800 horsepower. Cool. Making our way back here, give us an idea if if you can. And I know this young man just stepped away. He's manning up. I know that these things are not self-supportive. You have to load and unload them. But one man works on per machine, or does one man have more than one machine on these applications here? Most times we've got one guy per machine, but right now some of the guys are working two machines at once. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make sure that we've got all the machinery utilized. Right now is by far our busiest time of the year. Yeah. And we're gearing up to sell a lot of turbochargers this year, so we need all the help we can get right now. I have to tell you, after being in Las Vegas for the uh, Superclass Super Nationals uh, Mel, Mel's event and watching how fast all the turbo cars were, including you guys as a house car, of course, 
but to uh, to see how many were there and how fast they were, it was just amazing. And the way they're catching on now, there was a time that a lot of the turbo cars lacked consistency, but those days appear to be gone. Absolutely. With the, a lot of the turbocharger technology has changed immensely over the last five or six years, and we've been a great part of that. Everything from our own compressor wheel designs, which are dubbed competition engineered aerodynamics, our new turbine wheel designs, the bearing system designs, everything we do right. is designed to help get a turbocharger to spool faster, better transient response, less back pressure, more boost, less heat. It's all the great benefits you want in a turbocharger, and we're doing it right here in Hebron, Indiana. We are showing you stuff that no eyes have seen, not not many eyes have seen before. How many guys and gals you got working here? This place is pretty busy. Right now at Precision Turbo and Engine, we have about 55 employees. Wow. We've been growing leaps and bounds every year, and uh, every year we just keep doing better and better and getting more product out there in the marketplace. To clarify some things as well, a lot of people um, put these turbochargers in drag racing applications, but that's the furthest from the truth. I mean, are they not? involved with tractors and that type of thing or a mile base there? Well everybody usually uh, thinks or sees Precision Turbo as a drag race performance company only. Right. Not only do we serve that mark but we've got champions in every venue. Yeah. Whether it's Hot Rod Drag Week, whether it's jet skis, whether it's offshore marine, truck pulling, tractor pulling, land right. speed. Heck even last week we had a person just set a record on a snowmobile. It's the woman's, it's the Guinness Book of World Records, world's fastest really? woman on a snowmobile. So we, we do it all across the board, Brian. That is really cool. Folks, we're on a great tour here today, up here in the, the, the I'm telling you, the turbocharger shop of the world. Well, we've made our way to the injector testing area, and that's something a lot of you folks probably didn't even know went on here. But uh, Joe, in talking earlier, you were telling me that when Harry actually got his start, it actually was involved with fuel injection. Absolutely. When Harry got his start, he was road racing his personal vehicle, and he said, you know what, I really need to learn how to tune EFI. So he started learning fuel injection, electronic fuel management, and this is a, a key portion of the business that a lot of people don't know much about. But what we do here at Precision Turbo is we go ahead and we bring in injectors, and we typically buy them in a thousand or more at a quantity. It's very crucial that you have a set of injectors that's flow matched. So what we do is we bring them in, we flow them in sets of two, four, six, eight, ten, whatever guys need, but most importantly, we get them matched up so within 1% of each other. Right now we have one of our key employees, Stephanie. She's over here flowing a set of fuel injectors for us. And it looks like next up on the bench, she's got a set of our 550 pound per hour pro injectors that she's getting ready to, to test as well. Well, that is so cool. So Harry, never forgot where he got things started out. And, and again, as a avid drag racer and racer in general, of course, I go back into the 60s and 70s. My son would know all about this, but uh, I, I, again, until I walked into Billy, would never have known. Yeah, like I said, it's a, it's a key part of our business that a lot of people don't know that we do, but it's very important to have a set of match fuel injectors, and uh, we are one of the industry leaders in what we do. Very, very cool. I love it. Man, just one more cool thing. I'm not kidding you. Up here at Precision Turbo, uh, you can get yourself tuned up with a set of flowed fuel injectors. And uh, a lot of folks, if you didn't know it, you know it now on this elite one-of-a-kind tour here today in North Central, northwestern rather, Indiana. We've made our way to the component cage, if you will, with the finished goods area. And not only do we see a lot of hard goods that are stacked on these shelves, but, you know, i got to tell you something that really blows my mind, Joe. I said earlier the place was like a bank. Now it's beginning to look like a hospital. Tell me why. This right here, Brian, is basically a, a clean assembly area. So what we've got in here is we've got all of our turbine wheels. These have all gone through our quality lab. They've all been component levelly balanced. We've put them in here so they've got a clean, sterile environment so not, no dust or debris gets on them prior to the assembly process. And that is amazing. And I must tell you, I, I'm not in the cabinet business, but that doesn't look like the tight cabinet you might just order off the shelf somewhere. No, actually these cabinets here, they were all designed and built by employees here at Precision Turbo and Engine. Really? Absolutely, yes sir. And actually and this entire building was designed and put together by our employees. It's a very green building. We've got four inches of styrofoam on the floor with radiant heat on top of it. R53 up in the, in the roof. I mean, it's a very green building and uh, it just goes back to our commitment, you know, to building the best things that we can. Whether it's a building, whether it's turbochargers, that's just what we do.
That is amazing. Let's continue to walk, if you don't mind, and, and uh, kind of go over. So this area, then, for the most part, is the holding area, if you will, for those parts that need to be grabbed off the shelf because the assembly area, I think, is... If I'm right, is on the other side. Am I correct there? You are absolutely correct. This component cage right here is where all the individual components to put a turbocharger together reside. So what we've got is we've got everything from the turbine wheels to the compressor wheels, compressor covers, back plates, turbine housings, bearings, you name it, it's back here. So what happens? Orders come in. Our guys back here, they pull the parts out, they put them in bins, and they send them down to the assembly group. All right, so we get ourselves into the final finish area, if you will, the fit and finish and the assembly, final assembly process. Talk to me about this. So what's going to happen, Brian, is after the guys pick the parts out of the component level area, they're going to put them in bins. They're going to send them down the rollers to our, our top-notch assembly group here. So right now we've got one of our top guys, Tim. He's assembling a brand-new turbocharger here for a customer. And then, the one that he's working on, will he, again, will he work on that one start to finish, or do they move – on down the line. Is that what you just got done saying there? Yeah, so what's going to happen is Tim's going to assemble the bearing system on the turbocharger. He's going to install both the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel. Once he gets that assembled, he's going to send it on down the line to the next man. That's Chris down there. What Chris is going to do is he's going to go ahead, put it in the VSR fixture, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to VSR balance the cartridge of the turbocharger. Okay. Once Chris is done VSR balancing the turbocharger, he's going to take it out of the machine. He's going to send it on down to John, who's going to install both the compressor cover and the turbine housing on the turbocharger. Very cool. Let's make our way a little bit past as Jimmy continues to uh, shoot that thing as these guys are working on them. Great job, guys, by the way. I mean, this is about as cool a thing as I've seen in a long, long, long time. So we're going from, I'm going to call it stage three here. And uh, tell me what's up next. So once we get through the third stage of the build process here, we've qualified that we've got a good turbocharger. It's past the balancing group. John's assembled the rear housing and the front housing on the turbocharger. At this point, it's going to be put back in the bin. It's going to be sent down the rollers. At this point, it's going to go into our product packaging station. So Cody and John down there, they're going to go ahead and they're going to box up the products. They're going to add any additional components that the customer may offer, whether it's a flange, a gasket, a fitting, whatever it may be. The guys will pack it up. They'll get it boxed up, they'll put a label on it, and they'll get that puppy out the door. But once again, I want to say a special thank you to Harry, Joe, Roger, everybody here at Precision Turbo and Engine. I want to tell you this. What you folks have seen today, very few eyes will ever see. And uh, it is a state-of-the-art working facility from the start to the finish, from the front to the back. You can call it a bank. You could call it a medical lab. You can call it about anything you want to, but you ain't going to call it uncool. This has been a really, really cool tour.